Hi, I'm Meg. Welcome to Plant Fit Meg. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you'll take a look around at some other videos while you're here. I make videos about healthy weight loss, simple plant-based recipes, and living a healthy lifestyle. Today I wanted to dive into the topic of protein and protein for vegans. How much protein do we need and how do we get it? So if you have been vegan for any amount of time, you have probably been asked once or twice or many, many times, where do you get your protein? So you can hit them with this. I get my protein from plants. I can get everything I need from plant-based sources. Even foods that are considered carbs still have some calories coming from protein. For example, potatoes are about 7% protein. Rice is about 10% protein. And my sprouted green bread is 24% protein. Where do you get your fiber? 97% of people meet their protein requirements, but 97% of people do not meet their recommended minimum intake of fiber daily. It can be frustrating sometimes to be asked that question, but at the same time, it's understandable because our common understanding of where we get protein is from animal products and primarily from eating meat. So rather than getting frustrated with that, question, I think it's helpful to take a step back and look at what the protein requirements actually are and where we can actually get it from. I'm not a doctor or a dietitian, so I have linked many, many resources and many links in the description box below. So go check them out for more information about everything I'm going to discuss today. I took information from multiple sources and tried to bring it together and really condense it and simplify it and uh, make it more digestible for you to have the information and have it in one place. But absolutely, if you're looking for more info, check the description box. There'll be plenty of links to resources there to check out for more information about this topic. So I hope you really enjoy this video. If you like it, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel below. With all that said, let's jump right in. First of all, does protein even matter? Should we even care about it at all? What's it all about? So protein is one of the three macronutrients along with carbohydrates and fats. And all three are important for the functioning of the human body. So you require all three to fuel yourself and sustain yourself and live life. So all the macronutrients are important. When you first go vegan or you are not vegan, but you have a loved one who is maybe making the switch, there can be concern about protein deficiency, also known as kwashiorkor. And that is something that is highly, highly, highly unlikely to happen to you unless you are not eating sufficient calories. So if you are eating a super, super restrictive diet and you're not eating enough calories to support you, it is possible to have a protein deficiency, but it is very highly unlikely. It can be seen in populations where uh, someone is being very, very restrictive with their eating in forms of eating disorders or also malnutrition where there aren't enough calories to go around. There's not enough food to go around. So animal protein is associated with insulin-like growth factor one, also known as IGF-1, which is a cancer promoter. Plant protein is not. Plant protein is linked to lower blood pressure, reduced LDL, and higher insulin sensitivity. The substitution of plant proteins in the place of animal proteins is linked to a lower incidence of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So in terms of grams of protein per day, the recommendation is 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. Some recommendations will say 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram per day. And if we look at the pounds rather than the kilograms, in that instance, it will be 0.36 grams per pound to 0.55 grams per pound of protein per day. So for someone who is 150 pounds, that would come to 54 to 82 and a half grams of protein per day. This recommendation is for the average person who is sedentary and who isn't in a special class. So isn't pregnant or breastfeeding or elderly 
or anything like that. Requirements for those groups of people might be a little bit higher and it also does not include athletes either. So I will get into the difference for athletes in a moment here as well. In terms of the range of macronutrient percentages, there can be ranges and variability depending on which source you would like to look at and use. So I think it's important to know where the information comes from and to make your best judgment on what information you can rely on based on the source of the information. And so I have some of my info here from the Canadian guide, the Canadian recommendations for RDAs, which is recommended daily allowances, and um, for the this macro breakdown. So in the Canadian guidelines, they say that carbs should be between 45 to 65% of your intake. Protein should be about between 10 and 35% and fats should be between 20 and 35% of your intake. And so there are ranges there to sort of accommodate and um, be somewhat flexible with what will work for you in practice. So I really appreciate that there's a range and it's not just a hard and fast rule or a hard and fast guideline. I will say that the recommendations from the plant-based community are slightly different from those recommendations. So when I was going through my plant-based nutrition certificate through eCornell and the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies, their recommendations were about 70 to 80 percent carb, 10 to 15 percent protein, 8 to 15 percent fat. So the recommendation for carbohydrate intake is much higher in sort of the plant-based community, at least within that realm and those experts and within that course, uh, and the recommendations for protein and fats are lower. They typically recommend a high carb and low fat diet. They also don't really recommend that you track your calories or track your macros and things like this. So uh, they recommend more so just sticking to your whole plant foods and assuring people that they will get what they need if they're eating sufficient calories from whole foods such as fruits and veggies, starchy vegetables, starchy foods like whole grains and beans, and then using higher calorie foods as condiments. So having, you know, nuts and seeds, nut and seed butters, avocado, and dried fruit as more just condiments or a small portion of what you're eating. You also don't need to worry about complementing proteins. So in the past, there was a theory that you needed to have complementary proteins to combine and have at the same meal in order to get all of the amino acids that are required and that is a myth not true having diversity throughout the day and throughout the week is great but you don't need to combine your proteins in each meal in order to get the required amino acids your body is very intelligent and it will process the amino acids and work for you you don't need to focus on the combining of proteins. A few complete proteins include quinoa, buckwheat, and soy, and eating rice and beans together is also a complete protein, in case you're wondering. I was really interested in diving into this topic because I've been vegan for six years. So when I first went vegan and I was sort of embarking on trying to do the whole food plant-based thing, uh, there was a lot in the community about just eating the food and not worrying about your macros and not worrying about your calories. So not worrying about your fats, carbs, and proteins, but just eating the food, eating all the plants, and you'd be fine and you'd get what you needed. And it was really the micronutrition that was the focus and emphasis and getting all the antioxidants and phytonutrients and not worrying about the macros, not worrying about carbs, fats, and proteins. So 
it's been really interesting now, six years later, that I'm getting into strength training and I have an interest in uh, bodybuilding and um, really building muscle and building strength. And so that sort of led me into uh, looking more into protein requirements and what would be optimal for my current goals. When I was going through my health journey and my weight loss journey, I wasn't really focused on those aspects at all because I was sort of reassured that I'd be getting everything I needed and so I wasn't really focused on it. And I think that's great and it's a great starting point and I've done really well with that over the years. And now that I'm getting into strength training, I wanted to delve more into this topic and look more into protein for athletes and uh, what the recommendations are for athletic performance and specifically for strength training and bodybuilding. So the protein recommendations for strength athletes are a little bit higher. So they range from 1.6 grams per kilogram to 2.2 grams per kilogram, which in pounds is 0.7 grams to 1 gram per pound. So again, for a 150 pound person, that would be 105 grams of protein up to 150 grams of protein and that's for strength training athletes for optimizing their performance. I will say that the plant-based nutrition course does suggest a lower protein requirement and more in line with sort of the general public uh, requirement and just eating more foods and eating more whole foods, more calories, and not necessarily focusing on the protein specifically. So I think it's a matter of really just taking all the information in, looking at the sources and where it's coming from, um, seeing if there are new studies coming out, if you can look at studies specifically. I personally have not looked at studies directly. I'm getting information from others who have looked at the studies. So I'm getting information from my plant-based nutrition course. I'm getting information from nutritionfacts.org, from Plant Proof, Simon Hill and his podcast and website. I'm getting information from The Plant-Based Athlete by Robert Cheek and Matt Frazier, and also Shred It by Robert Cheek. And I'll have a, a few other links below as well for plant-based dietitians like Brenda Davis and Juliana Hever. And so you can check it out and look into it and really delve into the topic if you want to. So overall, you can be a healthy vegan and get enough protein and not worry too, too much about it. Making sure that you're eating a balanced diet, a varied diet of whole plant foods, including veggies, fruit, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds, and you know, being a bit mindful of the higher fat and higher calorie plant foods, using them more as a condiment or as part of a dressing or something like that, rather than having them be the basis of your meal. You can absolutely be healthy with 0.8 grams per kilogram a day of protein. And if you're a strength athlete and you're someone who maybe has a higher protein requirement, you can absolutely match that and meet that on a vegan diet. There are many ways to go about it. Some people will prefer to eat slightly more processed foods to get there. So eating foods like textured vegetable protein, which is sort of an isolated soy product, eating seitan, which is made uh, out of vital wheat gluten, or even supplementing with protein powders and things like that. So I personally haven't delved into supplementing my diet with protein powders. I'm not super against it. It's something that I would be maybe open to or willing to try, but I just haven't bothered delving into it. I've been focusing on eating mostly whole foods, eating lots of lentils and beans and soy food, soy beans, tofu tempeh, and then also sometimes consuming those more processed 
products like textured vegetable protein and seitan as well. So everyone has to do what they are comfortable with and what makes them feel good and what works for them. I always, always at the end of the day, recommend doing what works for you and doing what is healthy for you. So what works for me might not work for the next person and it completely depends on your goals and your lifestyle and many different factors. So these are the recommendations for protein intake for everyone, not just for vegans. So the bottom line is to eat a varied whole food plant-based diet, enjoy your food, eat a diversity of plants, eat the rainbow as much as possible, and eat different types of plants throughout the day and different types of foods throughout the weeks so that you can balance out your nutrition. And if you're concerned about your intake of protein or any other concerns really, I highly recommend seeking out a qualified healthcare professional to discuss your specific situation. I've had great luck talking to a plant-based doctor, a lifestyle medicine physician, so I always recommend doing that if you have specific concerns about your health or about your dietary pattern, dietary intake. You can reach out to plant-based dietitians and I'm sure that they can put a program together for you and help you out as well. But overall, a big deal is made out of protein and we don't really need to panic or fret about it. It is a consideration and something to maybe pay attention to and just kind of know which foods are higher in protein and incorporate them into your day but it's not a big concern or a huge risk of protein deficiency and a big scary thing that you need to be super concerned about. And if you have specific goals in terms of strength training or endurance training, things like this, your protein requirement will be a little bit higher and it might be helpful to track your intake just to see where you're at and make goals accordingly, experiment with yourself, work with a professional and make your way and do what works for you. I hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you liked it, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel below if you haven't already. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!